The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship this day. As you likely know, on the recommendation of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada bishops, and at the request of the Chief Medical Officer of Health of Ontario, we have temporarily closed our church building and have suspended all gatherings. Therefore, I have suggested that we meet virtually as a congregation by playing this video at the time that we would normally gather for worship, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Martin Luther described the church as the place where God's people gather and the gospel is rightly preached. So wherever we gather with the gospel, we are the church. It's with sadness that we recognize the death of Erica Steiger on Wednesday this past week. Erica's family, including her only son Nick and close friends, will gather this coming week for a private funeral. May God comfort with the sure and certain hope of resurrection all who mourn. And I know that it goes without saying, but please do watch out for one another. I'll be checking in by phone as much as I'm able with many of our members. If you need assistance, please phone the church office and leave a message, and I will arrange for help. I check frequently for messages. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible at this time of physical distancing. We turn now to the abbreviated worship service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and truth for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The children's message. To the children and the young at heart, I say I'm glad that you're here. I'm certain that you are bringing sunshine into the building wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. In today's first reading, God wants to choose someone special to be the next king of Israel. And that someone special would be from Jesse's family, said God. People assume that God would choose his firstborn son, his oldest son, because everyone knows that's how kings are chosen. But God doesn't choose the firstborn in this case. Well, then the people figured that God would choose the best looking of Jesse's children. But God doesn't choose by looks. In today's first Bible reading, God chooses the unlikely David, the youngest, to be the next king. Have you ever not been the first one chosen when picking teams for a game? I was really lucky when I was your age, although I was terrible at every sport. I was usually taller than others my age. So team captains looked at me and figured that because of my height, I'd be good at sports. And so I was usually not the last one chosen. But it was because of luck, not because of any special ability on my part. But no matter whether you're chosen first or last by the team captain, please know that in holy baptism, God has chosen you. If you or someone you know isn't baptized but would like to be, contact me and we'll begin that journey. In the Bible story about Jesus that we'll soon hear, heal, hear, Jesus heals a man who was blind. And he does so in a way that's kind of gross. Jesus takes dirt and mixes it with his own spit, mixes them together, and puts that mixture onto the blind man's eyes. It's disgusting, but it works, and the blind man can see. So, when I read that story about Jesus, here's something that might help to make it real for you. Listen to the Bible reading with your eyes tightly shut. And imagine as best you can the feeling as Jesus reaches out to touch your eyes and heal them. Feel the mud on your eyes and feel the cool water of the pool washing the mud away. As we pray now, you can take whatever prayer posture you wish. 
eyes closed and hands folded as to help you concentrate, perhaps palms up as you picture receiving the gift of God's presence, or arms crossed as if God is hugging you. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for coming to us and touching us this morning, especially at this time when we can't touch our friends. Help us to feel your loving and healing presence and your friendship this week. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And children, don't forget to take a look at the children's bulletin that was included in a, an email to your parents uh, this morning. You're welcome to work on it any time, even as you listen to the sermon. Today, the first reading is from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king from among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If King Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and he will show you what to do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name for you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, Samuel looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. Samuel said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And Samuel said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And Jesse said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Jesse sent and brought him in. Now David was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 9 As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed, and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open? They asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day in which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. 
Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind, but how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know. I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this fellow... We don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, O Christ. And now the sermon. Do you remember back in 2015 when everyone was talking about something called the dress? It seems there was this photo and everyone was arguing about the color of the dress. Was it black and blue, as it appeared to some? Or was it white and gold, as it appeared to others? Here's that photo. What colors is the dress to you? I see that photo as white and gold. Do you? As Christians, we're trained to see. God adjusts our eyesight so that we're enabled to see things as God sees them. And it all begins in baptism. We are baptized so that as the baptismal liturgy proclaims, we may learn to trust God, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. This means the baptized are trained to spot indifference to others and God's creation. We are trained to recognize injustice and abuse. Once we are baptized, we cannot turn our eyes on any injustice that we see. As God's people, we are called to respond, sometimes by political action and other times through acts of generosity and mercy. 
How will God use this pandemic? And notice, please, that I said use, not cause. How will God use this pandemic to call us to respond? For what change might we work as a result of having lived through this pandemic? We've seen wonderful acts that happen when we're all focused on the common goal of beating this virus. Factories retooling to provide what we need, such as hand sanitizer and ventilators. Neighbors looking out for neighbors and seeking to serve them. Can these wonderful acts continue after the pandemic is no longer a threat? We've seen huge political will to inject billions of dollars to help us fight this pandemic. Having seen that political will, will there be a new political will for change after the pandemic? Will our medical and public health system need reinforcing? Can we find superior ways to care for the poor and homeless? Is there a better measure of our financial progress other than the stock market? How will God use this pandemic to call us to respond? For what change might we work as a result of living through this pandemic? Well, like the man born blind, we too are told to go and wash in the pool named Scent. We are God's sent people, going towards pain and suffering, bringing compassion, relief, and mercy. How has living through this pandemic so far, with its physical isolation, empty, empty grocery shelves, and reports of the pandemic's progress each day, several times a day sometimes, but also with cooperation and servanthood proclaimed, how has living through this pandemic so far changed you so that you will see differently. For this week, our prayers come to us from the Lutheran World Federation. We pray saying, hear our cry, O God, and responding, listen to our prayer. In times of restraint and physical distancing, when the body of Christ cannot meet in one place, we gather through the Holy Spirit in many different places, house, apartment, room, and call out to you. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Give courage and wisdom to national governments and local authorities to enforce public health regulations for the welfare of all and increase efforts to stop the spread of the virus that affects every human being. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Breathe the spirit of love and self-discipline into your church, that it continually promote and protect regulations and restrictions for the well-being of all. Strengthen our witness to embody examples of compassionate self-restraint. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. God, have mercy. Heal the sick. Strengthen the elderly and vulnerable. Protect all from the spread of COVID-19. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. God, have mercy. Support and protect all healthcare workers and all who serve the sick and those at high risk of infection. Reinforce all agencies that support public health. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. God, have mercy. Comfort and uplift those who are alone isolated, oppressed by solitude and anxiety. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. God, have mercy on the whole human family and your creation. Especially hear our specific prayers that are now spoken out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray this day for Helen, Dave, Shirley, Julian, Ken, Tammy, Bonnie, Esther, Maverick, Ralston, Jim and Ruth, Michelle, Amy, Thaddeus, and Cindy, and all who are shut in, including Audrey, Mary Lou, Dorothy, Eleanor, Erica, Eileen, Marie, James and Bonnie, Joseph and Lori, Margaret, Marjorie, Margaret, Rudy and Haiti, Sharon, Tony, Ursula, Wayne, and Glenna. We pray for Erica's family as they mourn her death, for those laid off due to the pandemic, 
and all whom we name before you. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Fill each and every heart with that trust in your grace that frees us and binds us together in communion in the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Send your Holy Spirit. Renew your church in its prayer and in solidarity with all its neighbors. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Remember in your mercy all those who have died and will die today. We pray especially for Erica. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Trusting in your great compassion and unconditional promise always to be with us. We pray, Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And now go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.